and uh, we've got uh, five distinguished and appropriate panelists here at the table. I'll briefly introduce uh, them to you. We've got on the far right uh, Luigi Abruzzese. He's a mechanical engineer with experience in design and production fields and is innovation manager at IEM Lab, a company that is also active in the aeronautics industry, as far as I understood from your website. And I think it's an industry which is uh, a bit years ahead of, of the shipping industry, if I'm not wrong. So that's uh, Luigi. Uh, we have, um, second on the right, we have um, Umberto D'Amato. He's a naval architect who's CNO, CEO and technical manager of uh, Perseveranza, a company owned by his father Giuseppe, if that's correct. And um, the company is active in both the tanker and uh, dry bulk uh, sectors. Then we go to the uh, left-hand side, my left-hand side. Uh, we have uh, Alessandro Peschetto, uh, who obtained a, a PhD in electronic engineering and uh, information science. Uh, he started with RENA 3.5 years ago, where he's currently in charge of marine software solutions and ship performance uh, and uh, monitoring. And then we have uh, Leonardo Rondinella, who represents yet another ship owner. We have one ship owner here, and then we have uh, another ship owner on the far left. And he's also active in the tanker market. He's fleet manager and CEO of LGR Di Navigazione. And uh, he graduated as naval architect and marine engineer from the University of Naples back in 1979. And last but not least, we have a Dutch uh, person here present at the table. Uh, Marcel van Haren. Uh, yesterday we had uh, Echo Spray uh, who was talking uh, and he had also a speech. Uh, but Echo Spray, they are not the only ones on the market uh, providing uh, abatement technology and scrubbing technology. And he is uh, representing one of the Echo Spray's, I would say, competitors, uh, like there is also Wurzeler, for instance. Uh, but he's uh, Alpha Laval and he's based in the, in the Netherlands. So maybe we have some different interests here. Uh, we heard some bits and pieces of the challenges we are up to. Uh, and maybe, if, if, if you allow me, uh, Alberto, I will. I will try to add some uh, fuel to the fire, if possible. Uh, last week, I was in, uh, in Manila. And it was a very interesting uh, speech made by Oscar Levander. He's uh, regarded as one of the top 100 most influential people in the shipping industry. And uh, he was talking about unmanned ships. Um, for, for some people, it's like rocket science. Uh, maybe for some people here at the table as well. For this reason, I would also like, if possible, to hear your voice on that. Uh, but what, what he was basically saying is that uh, we can expect the first unmanned ship uh, probably in four or five years from now. Uh, he's working, or he's Rolls Royce, and they're apparently working on an unmanned ferry uh, to go on the Norwegian fjords. Uh, after, after his interesting uh, uh, presentation, many people were saying how to evacuate a ship if it's unmanned. Of course, uh, when we're talking passenger ships, uh, <clears throat> there will always be people on board, and maybe we, we should look at the airline industry where it's not the pilots who are in charge of evacuating the airplane in case of an emergency, but rather the hostesses. Um, and then there's a lot of things moving on there. Uh, last week, there was uh, in Denmark, uh, the Danish Maritime Authority launched uh, a study uh, on unmanned ships. Uh, we have the NVGL, the uh, Classification Society, who also developed the Revolt. So maybe, yeah, maybe it will take another many years, but it's on our doorstep. So let's first maybe get back to the presentations and uh, elaborate on that. And if possible, maybe it's a question for the acad academics amongst us to comment on the unmanned ships, if you agree, Albert. Let's do. Yeah. So maybe for, let's first start with, with Rina. Um. Well, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, going back to the question, uh, are we ready for, is, uh, is everyone ready for, for big data? or for a managed ship, I would say uh, not everyone is ready. Um, I can see a lot of uh, ship owners that uh, approach to big data, uh, that are very committed to that, and they obtain very good results. They obtain uh, 
big value from big data. And I can see also the opposite. I can see uh, um, other ship owners that are, that are not ready, that are not uh, ready. It doesn't mean they do not put commitment in that, but uh, you need, of course, uh, uh, development of people. In, in the, you, you need the right people, training the people to, to accept this kind of change. And not all shipping companies are ready at the moment. But this is a natural, uh, it is a natural thing, I think. When uh, new technologies impact on people, not everyone is, uh, is ready for, for that. Maybe my, uh, my mother is not ready to use this smartphone as uh, young, uh, young children are. So, um, but I think that now technology is mature. So I've seen uh, a big uh, increase, uh, a big uh, development uh, in uh, extracting value from uh, big data. Since I'm uh, working uh, at Rina, so in, in, uh, in the last uh, three, four years, I've really seen a big, uh, uh, I've, I've seen companies that are now managing the fleet uh, uh, taking decision uh, not for the business as usual, but uh, ma making decision on uh, data analysis, on, uh, on uh, effective, uh, effective data. Um, and this is very good in my opinion. This uh, will allow to, uh, uh, to be more efficient, uh, not with, uh, let's say, new uh, technologies, uh, new engines uh, also, but uh, with uh, digitalization of, uh, of uh, fleet management. Uh, regarding autonomous ship, uh, I'm, uh, I'm convinced that uh, we will do it. On the automotive, they are already testing it. Uh, of course, in the shipping, there is some, uh, some uh, bigger issue related to, the, for example, the quantity of, of cargo that you, you carry on board, also the inertia that ships have on the water. It's not like blocking a car is one thing, blocking a ship is not so easy. So it's uh, things related to security and emergency that uh, probably will have to be evaluated and tested uh, very accurately to, uh, before, before uh, uh, really having autonomous ships, but they are on the path, I think. Okay, thank you. Just a thought. Um, about your speech. When we talk about uh, technology, technology is ready, technology is always ready. I mean, uh, who produces technology is a person who, is, uh, who has a, a high level of culture, but the technology is used by people who has not the same level of culture. So sometimes they use technology or abuse technology in a way that we cannot predict at the beginning. Regarding, so, I mean, this is I, um, a point for thinking, not, no, no, no more than that. It's not, uh, I don't want to criticize uh, anything, absolutely. Another thing, I, I, uh, at the moment I don't see unmanned ships as a naval architect. I mean, uh, in the same way I don't see uh, unmanned planes with people on board, <laughs> absolutely. Nobody will ever fly a plane without pilot, I think. <laughs> Maybe it's good to first have reaction from, uh, from you, uh, since you're also, uh, and then we, we, we go to the ship owners. Okay, good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you to Studio Lauro and Athena for inviting me to this uh, beautiful meeting. Shortly, I think this is the era of uh, shipping for zero, because um, simply data systems are simply available. Now it's very, very easy to get a large amount of data. It is possible to analyze that data and get results, high performance results for every big system, every critical system, for example. Thanks to this, we developed, for example, a, a strong uh, technique to analyze data uh, to work on migration from condition-based maintenance to predictive maintenance. This is now a little bit easy than, for example, 10 years ago, because we have data, we have a new kind of sensors, we have smartphones that are little computer in our hands. 
So now it's possible instead of, for example, 10 years ago. Uh, for example, one big result uh, we gained is to perform early damage detection on an high-speed engine from automotive uh, section, and we performed 15% uh, in time before engine failure, we stopped the engine. Uh, for automotive, this means about, uh, from testing band facility to the road, it means about five to 7,000 kilometers. It is very pressure for, uh, precious to know and to understand, for example, that the critical system is going to break, is going to break, not just broken. And all this, I think, is possible for the new devices, new kind of sensors, connectivity, clouding systems, all these systems together make this, these things possible. And for example, we succeed in this. And now I'm working uh, strongly to migrate from automotive to novel systems. Thank you. Thank you, um, Luigi. Uh, maybe uh, Umberto, how are you coping with, with all these challenges? Oh, good question. I recall what Alberto said at the beginning, that uh, when he graduated, he compared uh, the tools in his hands uh, with those used by his father and now as well. So I can say the same. When uh, I started my job, I ended up my university course in 1981. Communication with ships was done via cable. There was a radio operator on board operating Morse key. So receiving a cable for the vessel or sending a cable took days. As well, making phone calls from a vessel, you need at those times to connect via radio telephone with, on short waves uh, with a radio station, maybe calling from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, Chevening a radio. Then the operator was connecting to the office. The conversation was one-way conversation. Hey, can you read me over? Yes, I can read you over. No, I don't hear you. A lot of noise, scratches, and so on. So nowadays, uh, life should be easier, but there are pros and cons in anything. Uh, the pros, okay, I think most people said what is positive in this uh, uh, big data exchange, but the uh, negative things I would mention, just few things. Electronics, everything which is electronic is very easy to fail. How many times my mobile phone, your mobile phones had a breakdown? Because of what? Because maybe they just fell down or just one small electronic component inside got burnt. And in this case, just change the mobile phone and go on. But on board of a ship, also a lot of electronic fails because of vibration, because of uh, marine environment, a change of temperatures. And in those cases, we see that the crew is unfortunately less and less ready to react because they much rely on those electronics and if something fails, it's even difficult to check what happened. The electrician on board is not a, an electric uh, expert. It may be able to change bulbs, <laughs> lights, but no more than that. So you need a real an electronic engineer nowadays. As well, another thing, uh, I got with me my small pen drive, which I keep in my wallet. Uh, all the brochures, all the Magazines we received when entering here, maybe if digitalized, it can take 1% of the storage space in this 8 gigabyte <coughs> pen drive. But what happens on board of a ship? Anybody coming on board is having a pen drive, could be post control, custom authority, ask it to the master, Captain, please, can you print this form and fill it for me? It is 99% sure once the pen drive is in the computer, a virus is entering the ship's computer system. And therefore, ships need to get continuously uh, virus, uh, antivirus system updated. But it's not enough because there are always new virus coming up. And just uh, I'd like to mention uh, in the year 2000, everybody remembers the world was feared of the millennium bug. They thought, everybody said, well, what would happen if there is a computerized system which do not recognize the year 2000 as a, a calendar date and falls down? We, we made assessment on board of our ships at those times, and we found that a few systems were affected by this millennium gap. So the 
easy solution was to backdate <laughs> to 10 years earlier, so to have at least 10 years more time in order to, to find a solution for that. And last thing I would like to remember is uh, an unfortunate case, a vessel that grounded, uh, was a container ship a couple of years ago, the Rena in New Zealand. That vessel was running on ECDIS, electronic charge system. Master Chief Officer were on the bridge, but they were fully busy with uh, commercial matters. The vessel was arriving in port. They had to prepare the charging plan, documents of arrival, bills of lading, and so on. And only an AB, enabled seaman, was in charge for checking the ship's position. The vessel grounded. Everybody know that was a big disaster, was a pollution, but she was fully automated. Everybody was on full in the hands of the electronics. <clears throat> this is my conclusion that, okay, uh, big data change is something that really helps us, but we don't have to get drunk of that. We don't have to rely too much, and the mar master must be more mariners than, uh, uh, <laughs> how to say, managers or dealing. But unfortunately, the pressure that is coming from everybody. I I'm personally receiving something like uh, between uh, 100 and 150 emails every day. Most of them require an answer. And the few phone calls I receive are just people asking, sorry, I sent you an email one hour ago. Why haven't you answered yet? The same thing happens on board nowadays. The master receiving massive amount of emails. Everybody needs a quick answer, which in the end uh, makes, uh, again, marine, master to be no more so much mariners, not so much people dealing with problems at sea, but dealing with uh, uh, simple office answers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Umberto. In my opinion, you have pointed out two, two points which are really worth of note. One is the what you said with your example of the pen drive. Uh, now ships are everything, have now are having everything interconnected. So probably, in my opinion, there will be sooner, uh, quite soon, a new person on the crew, which must be an, uh, an expert of computers. Absolutely, otherwise you're on the risk of stopping everything. The second thing you, you have pointed out is really true, is new technologies, uh, with, new, with new technologies, we are, uh, um, we are willing to have always real-time answers, but sometimes it's impossible. You have to think to things before giving an answer, otherwise uh, sometimes the problem you create is bigger than the problem you already have. And so, now, give the, the, the word to Leonardo Rondinella, other ship owner, <laughs> representing LGR di Navigazione, who also has some in, interesting in issues on the topics. Please, Leonardo. Okay, thank you, Alberto. It's uh, quite time to say good afternoon. <laughs> it's a bit late now. Okay, I would like to um, emphasize uh, some aspects regarding the cybersecurity from the owner perspective. Uh, how to deal with this uh, new uh, risk and uh, what, uh, mm, which tool can, can be used for uh, mm, dealing with uh, risk assessment and uh, the security plan for uh, this uh, new uh, risk. Um, the, the, our company uh, started to, to st study this uh, uh, matter uh, um, taking uh, some uh, uh, guideline from the IMO. The IMO issued uh, on the 1st uh, the first of June this year the interim guidelines on maritime cyber risk management. And uh, in particular, there are five points to be taken into consideration uh, to identify, to identify the risk, to identify also the person in charge for, uh, um, uh, for taking care of the uh, cyber matters uh, to protect, to detect, to respond, and to recover. Um, in this regard, we have prepared a uh, confidential document that is the uh, cyber uh, security plan that at the moment is not mandatory, this is, uh, but I uh, strongly recommend to use a, a, a similar tool for uh, um, having a better uh, protection 
uh, against the uh, cyber risk, also in, uh, regarding the possible insurance coverage, because in case of, of incident, uh, uh, from a cyber attack, uh, it is uh, quite disputable if the insurance coverage is uh, still in place. Um, for doing that, uh, we have to consider also how to protect the software on board uh, using a proper uh, password, proper access, and also to have a frequent inspection from the IT engineer uh, that we have in the office for identify uh, virus and other uh, dangerous uh, files on board. And uh, after that, uh, we have also uh, to um, protect the, uh, the diffusion of the uh, social networks. That is another important point, because uh, uh, according to the uh, MLC, we have we, we need to allow the people on board, the crew on board, to use uh, the um, communication system, but uh, it is extremely important to protect uh, this data uh, in, a, in a proper manner, so that the, the, in order to prevent some leaks from the vessel that could be also dangerous in terms of cyber uh, risk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Leonardo. Also, you pointed out another important aspect, in my opinion, which is the insurance. If the insurance covers or not covers the risk coming from, um, uh, from the uh, cyber piracy. And insurance means uh, uh, risk evaluation and standards to evaluate the risks, which at the moment, I think, are not, uh, not yet issued. This is why uh, it, it is uh, now time to start with uh, some tools, some procedures uh, for, uh, for that. Thank you very much. So to wrap up the debate, we have uh, one more person on the panel. It's Marcel. Uh, Marcel, could you, as a, actually you're a supplier of, of, of hardware to the ship, but could you give any comments on what we have heard here uh, before? Uh, yes, thank you um, um, for um, uh, invited to this uh, to this interesting conference with um, such a variety of um, of persons uh, attending. And thank you for um, taking place in this uh, panel in this session. Um, let's say, of course, it does not completely fit to um, to my task, but um, of course, I can command. Um, looking to, um, to the scrubbers, we have heard an interesting uh, presentation uh, by yesterday on, um, on the scrubbers, so I will not repeat that. Um, of course, um, um, our system has, uh, has similarities, but there are also differences. And if you look to a scrubber, it's not only hardware. Um, uh, there is also um, uh, electronics, um, and there is uh, many data measured. Um, in a, in a scrubber, let's say, you have to um, measure, there is mandatory data that needs to be measured and that needs to be logged. Um, that's related to the exhaust gas, that's related to the discharges, and that um, has to be handed over to the port authorities. But uh, there is more than this mandatory data. Of course, um, uh, we have seen two interesting presentations uh, today. Um, you can measure many more data, and. That's what we are actually doing. But measuring is, um, is one thing, and um, you have to do something um, on, the, on this data. And um, I think that's, that's not so different um, from, um, from what, what we have seen in the presentations um, today. Um, optimizing the design, um, um, predicting the maintenance, uh, when is a service intervention uh, needed, that, that, all, that, that kind of things can be, um, can be done. Uh, we have uh, heard about the risks um, in, um, in, this, uh, in this big data. Um, uh, measuring is one thing, but um, you have to get it uh, onshore. You have to, um, to um, transport this data to, um, to the offices. And um, 
there needs to be a good protection, um, uh, not, not only um, for, the, for the owner, but of course also for the competition. Um, eh, there are so many people that are um, handy in, in computers and can, uh, and can uh, get access to, the, to this data. Um, so that, that, that's my opinion. And coming back to, uh, to what, uh, where, where we started this discussion, the unmanned uh, ships, if, if I may give my uh, opinion on that. Um, I have been an opportunity to, uh, uh, to hear a similar presentation from Oscar Lavanda um, uh, two years ago. Um, he also mentioned there, in, in four to five years, we will, um, we will have the possibility to have unmanned ships. And, and now we are two years further, so he, and he's telling the same. Um, there is, um, I, I think it's possible um, if, if you look to the, to the shorter uh, routes. Um, there, there is two things um, that, is, um, that, is a, that is a risk in, uh, in this uh, uh, development. And um, when, uh, when operating ships, um, um, of course, um, uh, and, and not only ships, um, you have uh, always the risk that something unpredictable happens. And how will you, um, let's say, recognize and how will that be solved? And um, um, maybe there is uh, there's intervention needed from, from someone. And um, now that, that's, I think that, that needs to be... Um, that needs to be checked carefully. And then on the other hand, if it comes to, uh, to long way um, shipping uh, overseas, um, if something happens and, and there is intervention needed, how will you make sure that you, um, that you are on board um, in, in a short time? So that, um, yeah, that, that's my view on, uh, on this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marcel. I don't know if there's any time left. We've more or less uh, tried to uh, respect the schedule. Um, are there any questions from the floor? Uh, if not, uh, I would like to uh, conclude by saying that absolutely the last word hasn't been said so far and it's uh, maybe still looking a little bit into a crystal ball. Uh, and, and maybe it, um, it would be nice to have it uh, on the agenda again next year. Um, I just, are there any questions from the floor or uh, everybody's fine? Well, I would like to, take, uh, to thank the panelists and the, uh, the speakers uh, for this uh, interesting um, debate. And I understood that uh, we will skip the coffee break. So we now go to the next session. That's uh, what they told me. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Loro agrees, but uh, that's what your colleague told us. Uh, yes, in the, thank you very much, Philip, and uh, to all the speakers and panelists. This was a very interesting panel. And I, next year, I would like to give um, uh, a little recognition to the most interesting session. I think uh, if we had this already in place this year, I'm sure that this uh, panel uh, and this session would compete. So thank you to the moderator, thank you to all the speakers, uh, thank you to uh, to all the people who propose this very interesting topics and uh, I hope we can have something else next 